this is a bit of a dream, I can't lie. And it's also a bit weird in a good way because Mr. James Samuel is a very dear friend of mine. This is my brother. And my brother just happened to make history um, this last year with an incredible piece of work. And I'm inspired on many levels but today we're going to focus specifically on the music because I'm an aspiring film composer myself. <clears throat> and <laughs> let's let's get it. Let's get that let get that straight. And um I I want to start James first of all by saying welcome and thank you for taking the time to share with us and to share with me. Um but I want to know, first of all, and I can't believe I never asked you this, of all our thousands of conversations, where did the harder they fall come from initially? Where did this idea come from? Well, firstly, thank you, Laura Mvula, aspiring composer, an all around genius for doing this, uh, for doing this, uh, moderating this uh, Q&A. Like, it's an interesting thing. I, I got to say, guys, that me and Laura are super, when I say we're super, super close, it's strange because, you know, they presented they said, ah, oh, um, and who should we get for the moderator? Laura's name was on there. I was like, Laura, that's like my, okay, we are so close that all of the songs on the soundtrack, I wrote and, and produced the entire soundtrack, and all of the songs on the soundtrack, Laura guide vocal those songs for me. It'd be Laura guide vocaling or, Songs. The, the song that's won um, uh, a bunch of, the, I think it's been nominated a bunch, for a bunch of things and won a bunch of awards. We'll speak about it later. My Guns Go Bang with Jay Z and Kid Cudi when it goes, Fragile Life, the reflection of the. That's Laura singing. That's how close me and Laura are. Like she's still on the track. Taking the song features her as well. Okay. But allow me the latitude of answering your question. Mm. The idea for the Heart of Day 4 came from um, just my love of Westerns as a kid. You know, growing up in England, Westerns were always on TV, right? When we grew up, they were always just in the background. Um, uh, even even the, the TV shows, the Bonanza and all those things, they're just on in the background in the daytime. And then in the evenings, there'll just be a Western on. And my parents were always watching them. I just used to watch all of these films and I loved them so much. But they would always give us, like, present a narrow scope for us to look at these films through a really narrow, extremely narrow vantage point. Where if you're a woman, you're always submissive to a male um, storyline or weakened male plots. And if you are a person of color, you're always subservient and treated less than human, any person of color. So if you're a woman of color, then you barely exist. And so growing up, I wanted to, see more of myself and, and find out more about the old west because surely it couldn't just be white males that were that lived in that period and um uh i found out as i found out more i, I uncovered all of these amazing characters rufus buck nat love stagecoach mary cherokee bill gertrude smith bass reeves who was the inspiration marshall bass reeves who was the inspiration for the original lone ranger this stuff was this all this information was absolutely amazing to me so i knew when I make a film, when I grow older, right. my first film would be assembling all of these people like superheroes in one place and one time and, uh, and uh, the, calling it The Hard Day Fall. I knew I was gonna, that was going to be my first movie because it's something that I've been starved of my entire life. Wow, okay. That's mad to me. So the vision mm -hmm. started early. You already... Super, super, super early, as, a, as literally as a child. I, I think I got into reading about these characters when I was about 13, 14, wow. or maybe 15. And then, and then uh, a good 15 years ago, I began on the journey um, around the time I first met Idris, probably like 16 years ago. I began on the journey to, to, um, to making this film a reality. And it took a good 10 years solid to actually make the film. But it was worth it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a long, you're yeah. in it for a long haul. It's stay the course. Yeah. It's, it's stay the course. It's a marathon. Stay. 
Yeah, stayed the course. You were pretty much there, um, there mm. the whole time. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, it was about trying to make, um, trying to give it its own, its own signature. It's, it, it's, it was more than just um, putting all of these people in one place once, and then you have to assemble a cast of this century, right? And then you have to, you know, uh, you know, discuss with yourself what you're going to do stylistically and how you're going to how you're going to make this film stand on its own feet and mm. give it its own timeless um, uh, signature, which I hope I which I hope I done. You know what I mean? It's superhero stuff. I don't think people understand. Well, they do understand the people that are here. By the way, I didn't say welcome to everybody that's here listening in. This is wicked. I'm going to try to remember that this isn't just about me and James and me getting all the info and all the secrets that I need. Um, okay, so the thing is, we've seen multiple hyphenate filmmakers before. Okay. But rarely, if ever, have we seen someone wear many hats on a project. How on earth do you manage to juggle every single hat that you're wearing in this process by way of composer, producer, director, dreamer, uh, just all of the things? Writer. Writer, yeah, it goes on. It goes on. Things that I don't even know about. Tell me, I don't understand. <laughs> You, you know, interestingly, Laura, they, for me, they're all the same thing, right? They're all the same thing, writing, directing, producing. I've always said a screenplay is exactly the same as a song. A screenplay has three acts. It's almost like with life, everything comes in threes. A screenplay has roughly three acts. A song has three acts, two verses and a middle eight, right? Mm. It is literally the same thing. You start in a, in one place and you end up at, at the end of it in, a, in at the end of the film in a place you weren't at the beginning. Same with the song, right? Mm. You build to the crescendo and you take us to a place um, we weren't when it started. Sing to the moon and the stars will shine. Mm. They are they're all the same thing. It's all just various aspects of storytelling. When they come together, it's the same thing. So my process is when I'm writing. Mm. I always believe composers are attached to projects too late because composers come on for the most part in post-production. Yeah. Right? Yes. When your edit when the editors already um, put a bunch of temp music yes. in place. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like it's, it's a really frustrating thing for composers. Something that we don't, we don't speak about. Yeah. Mm. But we come on the project too late. Whereas mm. really what should be, what should happen, I believe, is that when the filmmaker has the script, mm. the composer should start then because the melodies and motifs that the composer will come up with mm. will influence the director's mm. shot composition, his, his camera choreography, uh, his color palette, the production design, when you can hear the, the, the sonic. And so for me, as I'm writing the screenplay, I start working on the motifs for the characters. You know, there's no um, words without melody, right? So if you talk, tell me something right now, just say something, anything. Here we are. Watch this. Watch this. Here we are in a room. La 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 here we are in a room. I start going, here we are, la, la, la. There's no word without melody. There's no sentence without melody. There's no um, letter without a note. La, 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 And I start composing the score from then. So by the time I'm finished the script, I pretty much have all of the motifs, all of the motifs and the, um, uh, uh, all of the, the uh, sonic design of that film done right um, and then when i cast the script and then you have all of the actors come on board you have like a regina king and idris elba and the keith stanfield the jonathan majors you have all of these people come on board they give your character more melody they give each character more melody more noise and more um structure. and then so you start hearing these um, things there's a there's a clip um um, we should play where um, uh, 
because of Idris's character and the way, the way, um, the weight he brought to Rufus Buck, then I hear other things in 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 the score. I hear like the Fisk Jubilee singers from Nashville. They are they were formed in 1871, just after the Emancipation Proclamation Act. They're still going now. They brought the old Negro spiritual. They were the first people to tour with the old Negro spiritual. So Idris's voice made me want to use more old Negro spirituals in the score. And then I'll, I'll, I will do that. Like there's a song called Do One to Others, right? And I'll, this is the first time I'm explaining how I made that made that um, song, right? And then I'll show you the clip. Okay. Because the way it just talks, I ain't gonna kill you, Wally, mm. but you will leave before sun. Or da 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 da. Mm. Redwood ain't your home no more. Mm. So with that, I was hearing do unto others as you as you will, will have them do. I don't know why. Do unto others like Wiley Esco done that to Rufus Buck, which is, was a bad thing. Mm. So I'll take two phones, two phones, and I'll go to voice notes and I'll do this. I did this. Do unto others as you will have them do. Moses climbed the mountain and he called him a fool. He came down to the... Then I'll play that back and record it in another voice now. Yeah. And I'll go over it. Do yeah. unto others as you will. Yeah. And play those back. And another... I did that about 50 times. Voice note to voice note. And sent it to the Fist of Jubilee Singers. Sick. Yeah. The compilation of voice notes. And I use... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. As the metronome that yeah. goes right in to the theme music, to the, that 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 goes right into the main score of the movie. Mm-hmm. It goes right into the score from "Do Unto Others," but I did that with my by keeping tempo with my with my finger, and so. All the fist Jubilee Sings had to do was play the original, sing over it, and listen to the tempo. We should we should watch the clip. You wanna watch it? Can we can we get that clip up right now? There's a lovely chap called Andy that's just taking care of all this stuff. He just text his voice. Oh god, okay. Yeah. You see, it makes I mean, I've already watched it about 136 times, but I (laughs) want to go back again and again. You see, and that scene reminds me of the thing that you do, that I, even as a writer, as a composer, I I think, how do you do that? Where you, there are scenes where you hear the score playing in the background and then seamlessly we'll see that the character then start humming the same tune. Exactly. Like. Exactly. You know what, Laura? because I've never seen that, right? Mm. And that always used to irritate me. Like, man, you can bust a character without it being a musical. Right, yeah. Character, and you know, people love a whistle in the, in the West. <laughs> yes. So I always have, and I do that a couple of times when they go to Maysville and you hear, um, uh, and you hear Lauren Hill. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. When Jonathan and, and when Nat Love and, and Cuffy are riding into the, the it's a white town. Yes. You hear Nat Love go. Yes, 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 yes. And Nat Love continuously whistles the theme yes. that was just playing on the thing. And it's just a seamless transition from score to um to yes. scene. Score to scene. Not only do they both yes. speak to each other, for me. Yeah. They are both the same Thank thing. Yeah. And for me, you can only... So imagine right there, Laura, mm. that can only happen. What you saw there can only happen if the composer is on board before you start filming. Okay, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The composer yeah. comes on too late. If I brought the composer on in, in yeah, post, yeah, yeah. It's, I wouldn't it's be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He, Nat Love won't be able to whistle because the themes mm-hmm. are not written. Mm-hmm. Composers should start working as early as possible so we can do things like have Nat, Jonathan Majors whistle the yeah, 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 theme yeah, 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 um, yeah. prior, which is why um, I do everything all at once. Interesting. You know what I mean? 
What it makes me think about my one experience of Gorin is from theatre. Now in theatre, it when I did with the RSC, it starts at the beginning. It has to be like I yeah, met the, the Royal Shakespeare, Shakespeare Company. For yeah, 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 yeah. Royal Shakespeare. Royal, like, Royal we were having coffee before the thing was in technical, like yeah, because yeah. I have to bring the characters to life. That's your yeah. responsibility, and it's one. Yeah cohesive narrative um, narrative what i want to know okay so i have no experience i couldn't tell you the first thing about shooting a scene i don't understand i've seen you once on set i don't know if you remember we were in la yeah and you're doing yeah. the jay-z video Susan Sarandon and Ron <laughs> yeah and i was just like okay there's james but he's in a different context and i don't understand what's going on it's just there's so yeah. many aspects to the thing so I want to know, in those spaces, are you aware, musically then, of what's happening? Even if, say, music hasn't necessarily been placed at that point, are you in a scene, shooting a scene, and like, okay, I know where this is going to go? Absolutely. Like, I, I always say that I hear, um, I see music and I hear film, mm. right? So, for instance, I'll be looking at um, characters and be humming score as they're talking. Or um, I remember one time, Jonathan Majors, who plays Matt Love, he put his holster back in his gun and he missed, it didn't go in smoothly, he went. Okay. And, I, and, I, and we done the take again. And yeah. Bring it in. Yeah. And I was like, cut, okay, let's move on. And he was like, no, I never got it properly. And I, I told him, no, you got it, you got it properly. He's like, I never got it properly. I was like, trust me. And when I was putting the music over it, I called him and I showed him the, the scene. When he missed the whole star, because he'd done it twice, it was so clean, he went. Yes! And 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 and, and in, in the film, I go, hey, no, boom, boom. Oh! I was like, oh my God, that's a musical. Like everything I see, and literally everything I, and when you're directing, directing is literally the exact same thing as conducting. It's conducting. You're putting all the pieces in play. Oh, okay. Action. It's conduct. You're, you're conducting. Yeah. Everything is music. It's literally, for me, if you can compose, you can direct. I don't know if that works in, in reverse because you need to have met, understand melodies and stuff. But if you can compose, yeah. Composing is directing, and I do not see any difference between um, between the two. It's all instruments and music, and mm. and instruments, music, melody, mm. um, juxtapositions. Um, and for me, having that um, having that uh, leeway just to to bring all of the to, to conduct, so to speak, all of the different uh, areas, right? Yeah. Actors, yeah. actors, and 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 and, um, and bringing all the the di and this is where you come in, bringing all the diaspora, right, yeah, yeah. of 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 Africa, right, all the African diaspora, the, mm. the world over, mm. and to bring it into a Western, and to mm. show how seamless it is, okay. like putting yeah. Fela Kuti, putting yeah. Fela Kuti on a, an action scene. And, that, and, 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 and that's, a, that's Ginger Baker on the drums. That's Fela Kuti and Ginger Baker. Let's start where we have come into the room to do Yeah, into the room. <laughs> hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, this is what I wanted to... I remember the first time I watched this. I wanted to ask you from time ago, like, okay, I don't like talking about genres. I've got a phobia about categories of music, like... Uh, mm -hmm. However, how do you go about choosing your palette on what colors to use? Why did you know this is Fella and okay, uh, that's Sister Nancy or uh, yeah. yeah, like how like Jay Z, like wh where? How do because, you? You know why? Because I think score soundtracks these days are glorified compilation albums. One song would have something to do with the movie and the rest of the tracks on the album don't have anything to do with it. The Days of Purple Rain are long behind us. 
But because one person wrote and produced the entire soundtrack, even if I use Jay Z, yeah. right, in 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 on one song, or Jay Z does a couple of tracks, and Laura and Vuda does, because it's all in my brain, they I, all fit. and yeah. sonically, mm. uh, in, instrumentation wise, um, they they all um, it all goes goes together. Um, we should play the clip, um, the ride out, the ride out too, where where you hear my voice. So here's the main theme. Da 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 da. And you hear me go in Nigerian, in Yoruba. Wahala they go, wahala they come, wahala they sing, wahala they run, wahala they talk, wahala they go. And you hear that over the over the uh 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 thing, just to show how 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 seamless these things marry together. Mm. They say I used modern music with Dolder, but Westerns always used modern music. Mm. Billy the Kid never heard of Ennio Morricone's electric guitar. He probably never heard of electricity. <laughs> when Dean Martin sings in Rio Bravo, my rifle, pony, and me, Jesse James never heard no song like that. It was always modern music. Mm. It, just, it was the modern music of the era. Mm. And I was kind of taking, not necessarily modern music, but dub and all of these sounds. Um, okay. Andy, if you're there, can you play the clip, the second clip of the ride out. In this clip, you're going to hear my voice um, um, over it, over the Western theme, um, talking Yoruba, and and we'll see how how seamless they are. I wondered, because I can't imagine it, but I wondered if there's any point in your process where you're like musically. Did things change? As in, do you ever come to the part of the process and be like, oh, no, that don't work. I need to change it. You know what, man? It's so deep that you say that. <sighs> the opening, the My Guns Go Bang, the song um, featuring uh, Jay-Z and Kid Cudi, that you do the middle eight, and what a middle eight it is. Laura, as you know, you are proof positive that that song was always in the movie. Look yeah. how long ago we recorded it, right? Yes. But it wasn't meant to be the opening title song. We had, ah! Elvis, we had an Elvis record. I'm not going to say what Elvis record it was. And I and and the Elvis estate gave us the record. Let me replay it, and I turned it into a dub. Do, 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 do. It's so beautiful. Kings okay. with the Dap Kings playing on it, and James Poison from the Roots, and all. It's so it's so beautiful. And it was the opening titles credits. Wow. Uh... It was a really bit slow. Yeah. And was riding through the mountains and then riding through the mountains of it. And that love just riding his horse. And Tendo, the black god, our exec, he was like, you know, that's a lot of real estate to waste. We could tell some story in it. And I thought, okay, if we have like Jonathan Majors as Nat Love, Regina King as Trudy Smith, and we have all of those um, things. Yeah. In, in, that's uh, like Paul Newman, uh, Robert Redford, the sting. And yeah. then I put the strings, the orchestra, on My Guns Go Bang after Cuddy went on. Avalon, be there, venture far and led. Mm. And then the orchestra came on it. Oh, and then Jay Z. Yeah, and then it was, yeah, it was a wrap. It was the mm. dopest opening title sequence ever. So things do change all the time, but you have to kind of like embrace the changes. I, I think that's the, the joy mm. of. Um, of uh, you know, composing and filmmaking, just because we're all filmmakers, right? Yeah. Everyone, a composer, an editor, everyone's filmmakers, and and the joy of film is that it's a constant, yeah, it's a more kind of it, it's, it yeah. constantly um, uh, changes from one one thing to a to another. You know what I mean? I'm conscious of time. I have like yeah. a really good question for you, but I I I wanted to know like when you're in again when you're coming towards the end of the process whatever that means because in itself as you just said it's always it's ongoing it's infinite yeah how does james samuel know it's a wrap this is your first well your first massive feature film. Yeah. Feature film. My, my like, debut feature. Okay. i know it's a wrap when i go this is Dope. <laughs> <laughs> like when when you hear the yeah like, done. Dope. like for instance uh 
uh, especially especially in composing, right? When when uh, there's a scene where I put redwood, I give each town its own theme pretty much, and I put, I gave the I made the redwood theme, and it was an experiment in dub. You hear dub like old school reggae, dark through this whole film, and you hear like doo, 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 doo. that baseline is the is the theme of redwood. Do, 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 then the echo guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. The 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 um the gumbo I was making the experiment before yeah. we started filming was okay. Does this go with my classical orchestra? Do, 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 do. And I'll imagine everything in my head before I start not putting things into notating all the instrumentation. Um, I'd be like. And it sounds good. Now I have to make it. Okay, bit by bit. It's like you have the, the test tubes and I'm the Matty Professor. Then I go, <laughs> like the old school Jack of High Fools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they fall. You know what I was like? And yeah, yeah, watch, I, yeah. I want to. I want to play. I want to play the clip with um the Redwood theme, and you'll okay. see what I mean about the bass, yeah, the, yeah, dark, yeah, yeah. the yeah. guitar, yeah, the echo guitar, yeah. and the orchestra. Yeah, let's hear that moment, please. Let's Sorry, be. There's so much you can do with layering up. I used to just yeah. use my brother and my sister, violin and cello, and layer them up. There's a different quality of sound. Different it... quality. It just sounds so haunting. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's Izzy Dunn. She just uses one, one uh, uh, string. It's beautiful. It's beautiful what she does. You know what I mean? I'm conscious that I've run out of time, but you know I'm a rule breaker. Just one more question from me. Yeah, Listen. Yeah. There can't be many directors, if any, on the planet that what is it like when you hear your own singing voice come out of them speakers and you made the picture? Come on, please, just let me know. Just, just put in the words. In a bit, in a bit what's this? When, every, and every time it's always a joke. It's always a joke running through the whole thing because I sing the, um, when he comes out of the mansion and you hear, you hear, because all through you hear, upon my return, see changes so that road was far and way too long. They yeah. run from me. And I'll use the yeah. same word. That's like an old Negro spiritual. I call it a new Negro spiritual because. Hey. Hey. Right, and then, but then when he comes out of the, the mansion, is the devil dead? You hear the same word. You hear. And upon my return, mm. you see a change it's so. The road was far too long. They'll run for me as they ran from you. The fear in me is in a distant view and there ain't no turning around. Now when I sing it, it's from a real place and it makes me cry when I sing it. And it's really heartfelt. But when I hear it come through the speakers. <laughs> literally, I always go, wherever I am, I go, and time for the sultry sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Upon my return. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. So, it's just so much fun. It's so much yeah. like glorious. Um, it's so much glorious fun. You know what I mean? And it's just an, an awesome thing to be able to do, to conceive, to come from London, from the hood. I had this idea walking on Kilburn Lane. So wow. I'm going to make a Western. And my guy, Tony Tego, our guy, Tony Tego said, really? Who's in it? I went, everyone. Mm. Okay, how are you going to do that, Jay? Mm. Watch me. I'll take a thousand flights to LA, mm. get stopped at immigration, red flag, mm. and everything. Um, uh, I'll conclude by saying, I took so many trips to get this, this done, right? Oh. And when you're going to do something, don't let anybody 
put their own limitations on your destinations, right? Don't let anybody sealing your, your destination with their, with their own limitations because millions of people tell you it's impossible and you can't do it. It's too big for your debut film. Your debut film is meant to be something smaller like Reservoir Dogs or El Mariachi or Clerks. Or, that's your debut and then you work towards doing, all right, go, okay, well, I'm doing The Hard Day for first and I'll just take a million flights out and, and immigration stopped me at, at um, LA. They red flagged me because I didn't have a visa. And I kept coming in. I mean, you're working here. And they had me in a private room. This is the last one I said. They had me in the, in, in the back room. They said, you have to go to the back. And there was like one white guy there and like 15 people, they were all of color, right? And the main boss, he was a Mexican man, right? The main the head agents. Uh-huh. And they said, so what is this film you say you're making? I went, look, I'm making this film, but I'm not being paid yet. I'm not being paid. But look, it's about, and I told them the whole story of the hard before the whole, and they were on the edge of their seats. Really? I like, they were on the edge of their seats. And the main guy, he spoke outside. You know when you say something by accident? Yeah. But he was trying to be hardcore to his yeah. men and yeah. to me. You're not getting in the country. When yeah. I finished telling the story the hard way for, he went, and I went, and no one gets called the N-word. And all of us are glorious. And all people of color. He went, I can't wait to see this movie. <laughs> Most we did. Yeah. I went, but you won't be able to. If you don't let me in, he went, no, 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 you're getting it. But James, next time you come, you need a visa. And he let me in. That was the last thing that, that was, I think that was the last time that, when it finally got to the studio. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I got my visa. Netflix got my visa and this and that. And then I was able to come in and make the, make the movie. But I'll take a thousand flights to get this thing done. So what you're seeing is a testament of the hard they fall is also, mm-hmm. as well as a, a, a cool like feat in filmmaking for me, but it's also a testament to, um, to, Willpower. We c- I come from the hood in London, Mozart Estate wow. in London, in West London, and um, and we're out here. We made a huge Western with all um, star, with an all star cast and big budget and original music, and it's all original. And and um, you know, get ready for my next trick because we're coming again. Of course you are. Well, can I just say on behalf of the world, thank you. Um, from the bottom of my bottom, it's something just so glorious to to see. I almost feel a little bit bad because as a young as your younger sister, you know how in the beginning I'm just like yeah 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 he's doing that film yeah yeah he's doing the film yeah 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 and then bang <laughs> I was yeah. like oh yeah. yeah yeah it's deep but you were with me every step of the way all through lockdown while I was yeah yeah the yeah music, sending you songs you sent me the vocals and, uh, and can I just say this human also had time and not just for me but other artists and budding creatives to to mentor me through my last album so one of the biggest lessons is we're all in this together and you've always taught me that um, always make Brilliant. time for each other. So yeah, we can't wait for your next thing. I can't wait. Put me on the score. That's all. A hundred percent. You're working on it. So. And um, yeah. thank you so much. And thank you to Netflix for giving me the little job, my first interview. You know, thank I really you. love it. Like, and thank and you thanks to everyone. To, yeah, thank you to the Ivers. You know, yeah. I've always been, been, um, been, Awesome and, and a, literally a bastion, a bastion of quality. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. You got your, your, your I you nearly know? put it. I nearly put it on the. Sh- and then I thought, nah, I can't be that. Per- I can't be that girl. Yeah, but, but it's, good. it's nice and heavy as well. I don't want one. <laughs> I just give you one. And uh, and we'll see you guys. We'll see you guys soon. But love you, Lauren, for life and longer. Love you, and darling. Love- and all you guys will be right back after this commercial break. <laughs> 